Tafma, Sureta Jameru, and the ladies and gentlemen present here this evening. Welcome you to Tafma and welcome you all to a very, very special evening here in Arsimpa Hall this evening. To start of our program, I'd like to now welcome our honorable advisor, Suri Tajameru, to kindly come and deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Dr. Hovital, Project Director, Task Force for Music and Arts. Good evening, Honorable Ms. Melinda Pavek, U.S. Consul General, Sonia Laul, U.S. Consul, Timothy Braun, Vice Consul, all invitees, musicians, press fraternity, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Task Force for Music and Arts and the entire Music and Arts fraternity of Nagaland, I warmly welcome each and every one of you to the official launch of the 22nd edition of the Hornbill Music Festival 2021. The Hornbill Festival is truly India's largest music festival. Its stages are in multi-venues and over 10 days. It has hosted musicians from USA, UK, Indonesia, South Korea, Japan, Hungary, and the list goes on. And of course, all the famous bands from the country itself. Hornbill Music Festival is also a multi-genre music festival, meaning there is something for each and everyone who come to this music festival, young and old, be it rock, pop, EDM, choral, hard rock, hip hop, blues, folk, and fusion, and the list goes on. And I was thinking to myself today afternoon, maybe the only genre that has not staked its claim yet in a very serious way at the Hornbill Music Festival would be jazz. And I'm sure it is not a long way from now because a lot of our young people I see are getting into that also. On an average, the festival engages about 500 musicians over 10 days, employs over 2,000 plus people, and has about 1,30,000 people in attendance during the entire duration. That's about the Hornbill Music Festival. But tonight, I also want to get a little personal and share a little personal story with everyone here, for many who might not be familiar with one of my journeys in life. As an alumnus of the International Visitor Leadership Program, USA, I have always been very grateful to the, to the United States, in, in particular, the US Embassy in Kolkata who selected me to be part of the incredible initiative in 2014 under their program, Peace Through the Arts. And ma'am, it is my honor to have this opportunity to say thank you for all that your country has done for me. The experiences and the lessons learned on that journey still remain fresh in the mind and the many best practices that I experienced and learned and observed has helped me immensely in my service to the state and to its people, especially the young people and the arts fraternity whom I serve. So let's give our madam, the US consulate and the initiative a round of applause for the wonderful work. Thank you. You will be happy to know that the IVLP network through the IVLP network, we have had friends from Rochester who visited the Hornbill Festival some years back and also participated in the music video project which was produced during the thick of the lockdown. 
the video was uh, around the song Imagine by John Lennon. And we shall be very happy to show you when we walk out of this building to another place where we will meet. The Task Force for Music and Arts, formerly known as the Task Force for Music, was formed in 2003 under the vision and leadership of the Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, Sri Nipiru Rio. From its very inception, the vision has always has been to strengthen the music and arts ecosystem of Nagaland, one that is professional, locally rooted, and internationally relevant. And on that note, we look forward to closer cooperation between the people of Nagaland and the United States so that to bring our people closer together through people-to-people -people contact, areas like culture, music, and the arts, media, and sports are positive areas for confidence building. And as an, as an alumni of the prestigious IVLP, I look forward to making efforts and contributions towards strengthening the ties between our people for mutual benefits. With those few words, I once again welcome each and every one to the 22nd edition of the Hornbill Music Festival. Thank you for coming and have a lovely evening. God bless. Thank you, sir, for the warm welcome address and for sharing your stories, too. May I now request uh, the Honorable Advisor Tafma to kindly honor our guests present this evening. As in, uh, in the place where you stand, our first guest to be honored is Ms. Melinda Pavek, U.S. Consul General. <laughs> Ma'am, that's a Nagashal. <laughs> Thank you. May I also call upon Ma'am Sonia Law Council. <laughs> Next, Sir Timothy Brown. <laughs> Next, uh, we have uh, Sir Nayantara Shroff press and media assistant. Yeah, okay. And next, we have uh, Abhijit Sharma. Great. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may I now request Ms. Melinda Pavek to kindly come and address us here, ma'am. lovers. Thank you so much for being here today. 
It is so wonderful to be welcomed at the Hornbill Festival in such a warm way. Based on my time at the Hornbill Festival yesterday, um, it is perfect and fitting that a celebration dedicated to preserving the Naga culture includes a standalone event focused on music. This is my first visit to Nagaland, a state with vibrant culture and diverse traditions. And last night, I loved hearing how the Naga performers used traditional beats and songs and blended them with new influences to keep the music vibrant and meaningful and celebrating the rich heritage and keeping it alive and changing. I am aware that the festival attracts visitors not only from within and around the state, but also from all over India and around the world. And as I've walked around through different parts of the festival, I've loved the opportunity to talk to people and learn where they're from and why they're here and what they're learning as they experience the festival and its traditions. In fact, when I was told in Washington by some friends that the most important thing I needed to do was come to the Hornbill Festival, I wasn't sure at the time exactly what I was going to encounter. But I am so glad I took their advice. You have done a wonderful job of getting out the message that the Hornbill Festival should not be missed. And one of the things that I love about the Hornbill, Hornbill Festival is something that was mentioned already. It's the fact that it builds people-to-people -people connections. And that is a critical part of what the US government strives to do as it works on supporting arts programs. Um, the US Department of State administers several exchange programs for musicians and artists. For the last 42 years, we have brought American artists to India to perform and engage with local audiences through the American Music Abroad program. Over 36,000 people from student and adult musical groups around the world have participated in this program. And through our One Beat Exchange, we bring together emerging musical leaders to collaboratively create original works and develop civically engaged music initiatives. One Beat is redefining musical diplomacy, in our opinion. The US State Department also offers the Arts Envoy program that engages American artists and arts professionals in cultural exchange programs and shares the best of the US arts community with the world. We do that so that we can foster cross-cultural understanding and collaboration. We can demonstrate our shared values and aspirations, and we can address foreign policy themes and objectives because People to people are the real exchanges. Governments talk to governments, but that's one level of communication. We really communicate when people talk to people, and we do that through our arts, through our music, through our culture, through our food, through our dancing. <clears throat> American arts professionals, including performing artists, visual artists, poets, playwrights, dancers, theatrical and film directors, curators, and others, travel overseas to conduct workshops, give performances, and mentor young people. U.S. artists also engage online through virtual programs that often allow for greater reach and longer-term connections. We've all learned during the COVID pandemic how to do virtual programs. And sometimes they're not as um, satisfying as being together in person. But we have learned how to do them and we've learned to take connections that maybe were once in person and we continue them virtually and then we bring them back in person like the Hornbill Festival has done this year. It's so nice to be here for that. 
I was going to talk next about um, uh, Teja Meru and his experience on the International Visitor Leadership Program, but he stole my thunder there. Um, so I just want to recognize that um, we consider him a brilliant representation of what that program does. That program looks for people who are the shining stars, the next talents, and takes them to the United States to participate in programs related to their passion and their talents and their skills. And I think that we can all agree that the work that he did on last night's Flight of the Hornbills and everything that he has done related to the Hornbill Festival and the Hornbill Mu Music Festival shows that our confidence in him and his talents was truly... Um, it was, was, was the right, we, we got it right, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So thank you so much for participating, and thank you so much for everything that you have done with that experience. For the last 75 years, we have also, through the Fulbright Fellowship Program, funded musicians to work on creative projects and build cultural bridges around the world between our countries. So as we focus on tonight and the music itself, let us all acknowledge the universal language of music and its ability to build bridges, in this case between the United States and Nagaland, Music can give us a glimpse into how different groups of people tell their stories. Um, it helps us to solidify distinct cultural identities. In the United States, for instance, jazz and hip hop were born from the specific cultural experiences of the diverse American, uh, African American community. Music connects us beyond spoken language because it expresses so many different emotions, whether it's love, fear, regret, happiness, anger, or longing. We feel those in universal ways through music. Our bodies tune into the vibrations, the rhythms, the pacing, the pitch, and become a part of the music. And to be honest, we need to feel that in person. It's not the same via um, video. It's not the same if we are not here to feel the beats. However, we are still lucky that nowadays access to technology has completely changed the ability of musicians to reach fans. It has broadened it in ways that were unimaginable when I was a child. <clears throat> Music recorded on a cell phone in a remote corner of India can garner millions of views on social media around the world. And it would be wonderful if one of the bands playing here tonight could become the next viral sensation. So let's all work on that together, okay? Um, finally, I think one of the best things about music is that you don't need to be skilled at performing to fully appreciate it. For instance, I can't play any instruments, and my family laughs at me when I try to sing, but I love listening to music of all kinds, and I always sing and dance along. Um, last night, in fact, during the flight of the hornbills, I was singing and dancing along, and the poor governor sitting next to me kept looking at me, wondering what I was doing. <laughs> So I'm really looking forward to hearing the groups here tonight, and I really appreciate your dedication to the art and the practice required to make your music beautiful. So kuk nalim, mpojie, and thank you very much. And rock on. May I now request uh, ma'am to kindly inaugurate the Hornbill Music Festival. Thank you very much, ma'am. Another loud of applause yeah. for everyone.
Maybe where he said I'm the same. Thank you very much, Ms. Melinda Pavek, for your wonderful words of encouragement for our people and also for inaugurating the Hornbill Music Festival. With this, we come to the end of our program, and uh, next comes in the bands. Yes, please take over.
ഇച്ഛന്
please have some lights? Good evening, Arsempa. Thank you for coming out tonight. It means the world to us. We are Imlia Kamayer and the Electrical Kid, and we play rock and roll. This next song is called Indigo. Seven Nation Army.
Hello, hello. Are you guys alive tonight? Are you guys having fun? We are here to celebrate life. We are here to celebrate music. So thank you all for coming out, okay? We have two tracks left. And we want you guys to help us sing the next two. Are you guys ready? We need the Arsempa Choir to help us sing the next two songs. Okay? It's a really easy song. Can you sing along with me? Can you have to sing this, okay? Whoa! sing this one, okay? This one is called Dancing in the Capital, and this one goes out to everyone here. for yourself to the best choir in the world the Arsempa Choir this will be the last song and we want you guys to sing along to this one okay this one is easier the previous song you had to sing like two entire lines you just have to say one word okay you just have to say one word maybe it's not even a word okay when I say when I say give me a ho you say yeah give me a hey when I say ho, ho, when I say hey, hey. Okay, so that's the song. This is the easiest song in the world, okay? This is the last song, let's all have fun together. This one is called Little Miss Sunshine.
Just a